Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in the Trigger Game to the Comp video, let's discuss Project Scorpio and a possible connection with both Ryzen and Vega. Now, I know what you're going to say to me, well, okay, what evidence do you have about this? Well, actually, an image has popped up on the internet. So I'd like to thank Alan via Facebook for this particular uh, tidbit of information. And it is a shot which 4gamer.net, which is a Japanese website, managed to snap in AMD's booth. And it's very simple. It's an image of a TV which has a very simple amount of writing on it, a very small amount of writing rather. Xbox Project Scorpio 4K Gaming and VR. Now do remember that this is in the same booth which Ryzen and Vega are taking place in. I'd also like to point out the timeline for Project Scorpio. Now at the very earliest I'm expecting to hear anything official from Project Scorpio is E3 2017, which is taking place mid-June, of course, this year. Now, realistically, the system itself is not going to be released until holidays. So what I'm probably expecting at E3 2017, obviously that was the first time we heard about the system officially, although there had been leaks prior to it. So what I'm expecting is Microsoft to give an update to the system at E3 2017, probably a tentative release window, possibly more information regarding the specifications of the machine, and probably a demonstration as to why we should buy it over the PlayStation 4 Pro, which obviously is down to Microsoft to try and market the machine, and us as customers to say, eh, well, okay, maybe I'll pile up my cash once its system is out. Obviously, that's kind of how it always works. So the fact is that what we do know about the system is that development kits have not started to ship yet. A couple of major developers have said that they have not got a Project Scorpio developer kits right this moment, which isn't super surprising. So it's possible that they have probably a target spec, which Microsoft have told them. So they'll probably say something along the lines of there is 12 gigabytes, that's the amount of memory that we can probably guess that is in the system. 12 gigabytes of memory um, running with a 6T flop uh, GPU, and they're probably telling them a little bit more about the CPU performance than what we have publicly available. All we know is that there's a 8-core processor in there, but that doesn't really say much. For example, what clock speed is it? Is it going to be AMD Jaguar-based, or is it going to be something different? Do we have, for example... Um, any changes, architecture changes to the GPU. And I think we can probably guess at this point, the answer to most of those questions is there are going to be some major changes to the architecture. Now, whether it is going to be Vega-based or not, I can't tell you that for certain. And I certainly can't tell whether it's going to be Ryzen-based. But I would not be surprised if there is at least some Vega technology inside this card, uh, sorry, inside this console. Remember Mark Cerny for the PS4 Pro said that the PS4 Pro actually did have technology from not just Polaris, which at the time, of course, was the, the GPU that was doing the rounds when the PS4 Pro was being announced by Mark and the team. With that in mind, we more than doubled the power of the GPU and adopted many new features from the AMD Polaris architecture, as well as several even beyond it. And also it had technology beyond Polaris, which the GPU beyond Polaris, of course, is Vega. I highly doubt it has something from Navi because that's way in the distant future. So that's very, 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 very unlikely. So what is much more likely is that he was talking specifically about Vega, which is obviously an architecture. I can therefore make the pretty safe assumption that Project Scorpio will have something Vega-based. So the big question is about the CPU, and unfortunately that's a bit of a mystery. It's possible it will have a severely underclocked Ryzen CPU, or perhaps a lower power variant of Ryzen. There are talks, of course, that a Ryzen is going to uh, basically be a whole slew of products. It's not just going to be for bleeding edge desktops, but it's going to be up and down the stack. So from low power devices all the way down to the super ridiculously high end servers with like, you know, 32 cores or whatever, uh, maybe even multiple sockets, depending obviously on your usage purposes. So it's certainly not inconceivable that AMD might do this um, for uh, Microsoft. 
And it's also possible that there could be a couple of version ways they could do that. For example, they could potentially have eight cores which have SMT, which means 16 threads. I don't think that's the way they're going to go because it would make way too much of a disconnect between it and the original unit. It's possible they could have a four core processor with SMT enabled, but just with higher clock speeds, which certainly could be one way to do it. It would theoretically mean that the actual APU, which comprises both the uh, CPU and the GPU could be a bit smaller. Or the other way they could do it is a particular model of Ryzen. Obviously, we don't know what they are, which perhaps doesn't has S have SMT enabled. Therefore, certain parts of the core perhaps are a little bit smaller anyway. And then they could have that together at running at a you know, median clock speed, like a, a mediocre clock speed of like 2.2, 2.4 gigahertz, something along those lines. One hint that we have that their CPU is a bit different is that Phil Spencer, I believe it was Phil, or it might have been Aaron Greenberg, but I'm pretty sure it was Phil Spencer, said that the system would be, quote, balanced, and that was the key around the design of Project Scorpio. It would be designed from the ground up to be a balanced system. Now, if it does have Vega, I can almost guarantee you that it's not going to have HBM memory enabled because that would be very unlikely. It's possible it could have uh, something along the lines of 12 gigabytes GDDR5 and possibly, possibly make use of the HB, um, HBCC, which is the high bandwidth uh, cache controller system. But I don't think they would do that either. The reason they can't go super duper duper crazy is because they still need the game to be able to run across the original Xbox as well. But do remember that Microsoft are being rather boastful when it comes to Project Scorpio and they really want it to be 4K enabled. That could also be one of the reasons that they're so confident of 6 TFOPs being enough for virtual reality. I don't want to go into a whole spiel about Vega's architecture because I took, you know, a bit of time doing that yesterday with a particular, I'm sorry, with a proper breakdown. But from what I understand, from what uh, AMD have told us, and obviously that means do you believe them? How much difference does it make in the real world? We just don't know. There are a multitude of different changes they've made in the background. This includes about twice the performance per clock speed when it's handling geometry, massive changes to the efficiency of the GPU, and um, basically speaking, 8-bit uh, uh, float support. Uh, it, it basically means that the GPU itself is not just more efficient and faster, but also it means theoretically the game should run a lot nicer at the same level of T-flops of an older uh, architecture, which is pretty much how it always works. So, is 6 T-flops enough? Is the, G is the GPU inside the Xbox Scorpio even going to be 6 T-flops? Maybe they'll decide to increase the clock speed, but from the rumours, they're saying they don't want to do that. 6 T-flops is still the target, and honestly, that would be very easy to achieve. I won't go through all the maths in this video, but all you have to do is take um, a MIDI... A, a, a mediocre number of compute units, let's say between the high 40s, let's say 48 to let's say 52, times that by 64, times that by 2, and then start messing around with different clock speeds. And you can get there pretty easily with like, you know, the 48 to 50 ish, you can start getting that um, 60 flops at quite low clock speeds, around 1 gigahertz ish, is not too difficult. So it's going to be rather interesting to see what Microsoft can wrangle, what AMD are going to provide them, and also what impact that's going to have in the industry. I think it's fair to say that Microsoft have a chance to really cash in a very different niche from both PC gaming and the traditional console here, because I'm going to assume the system is going to be more expensive than the PS4 Pro, but obviously there's a ceiling that they cannot exceed price-wise, and that's one of the reasons, of course, that they can't just say, well, we're going to put in like a 25T flock GPU with like, I know, uh, 16 gigabytes of high bandwidth memory combined with X and, you know, whatever silliness we want to go through as this example, because ultimately there is a price point. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.